This is a piece of gold ore I found metal detecting. And that, that's a fire. I have more pieces of gold ore right here. And if you look right at the tip of this piece of gold ore, you'll see the gold we're trying to extract. Normally, I would take a piece of gold ore like this and crush it using one of two methods. Either my dolly pot with stamping, or using some kind of mechanical crusher like the RC1 from Keen, or the off-grid jaw crusher from Goldrat. But we found a super interesting newspaper article that explained that when the old timers found an ore body, they would light a fire next to it overnight, get the ore body really hot, and then pour vinegar over the top to work it. And I was like, you know... I've got some ore, so let's cook some rocks. Once I get a bed of coals, we're just going to literally put this in the middle of it, let it get really hot, build a fire on top of it, drown it in vinegar, and see what happens. As we all know, fire is really cold, so don't touch it, otherwise you might get a cold burn. And second of all, exploding quartz, so just don't, like, stand in the way of where it explodes. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> That's a lot of fire. <laughs> Thank you. There is no possible way that that fire, being a wood-powered fire, is going to get anywhere near hot enough to either melt the gold, deform it in any way, or change the sulfides from iron sulfides so that they relinquish their gold. You have to get much higher temperatures than what that is going to do. I think the main goal for this is literally just to weaken the quartz. That's been going for half an hour now, and I realize I can make this a lot faster if I use some um, air power. <laughs> Center of screen is where our quartz is, and um, it's getting red hot. Almost melted the handle off that, but that's all right. My whacking stick. The article said that you had to get the quartz red hot and that right there is a piece of quartz, the largest piece in there that is red hot. Right, this is the sketchy bit. If anything's gonna go boom, it's now. Okay, and uh, look away from it. That was hot. <laughs> That's an easy way to float most of the charcoal away. I just looked in the bottom here, and one of the rocks has broken apart right where the gold nugget was. How good does that look? The contrast is amazing. I should put you near the vinegar. Yep. Look at that! It seems to have fractured all these pieces right where the gold is. The next step is putting these in a dolly pot and heating them because we're only going to know if this technique worked by introducing them to Stampy. Just dropping that in there, it felt really soft and brittle. But we're going to let Stampy tell us if it's softer. Three, two, one. Oh yeah, no, that is way softer. One mediocre hit and it did that. And look at the inside, it's turned to like chalk. Wow. <laughs> That's the easiest crush I have ever done. That's only from a couple of very light hits. That is impressive. And I'm starting to see really small specimens come out like that one. Lighter hits mean less damage to specimens like this. So this could be a really interesting way of processing larger volumes of ore. There's another one in there, right there. Fernie, less? There is a slight problem. All the tiny little micro fractures that I can't visibly see but are clearly there have absorbed that vinegar. And when I'm crushing it, it's turning more to a slurry. I'm going to give these overnight to dry, and then I'm going to come back in the morning and crush them when they'll turn to powder. 24 hours later, and everything is very dry. To give you an idea of how dry, this is a piece of quartz that went through the fire, and you can break it by hand. 
all that black material is stuff that came off the pan that I burnt the rock in. Stampy, my homie. You're so good at smashing stuff, Stampy. It smells like burnt vinegar. I can see one tiny little bit. Oh yeah. There we go. One little flaky. He. Ah, oh, now that I've actually got him, he can go in the pan. Gold doesn't break apart like the rocks do. It just deforms because it's a very soft, malleable metal. Therefore, no matter how much I crush the rock, it's only ever going to squish the gold and never make it small enough to fit through the screen. If I see nuggets in the screen, I just put them straight in the pan. All right, Clarence, you big beefy babe. I've got the first rock down to pretty much nothing but powder, except for these few crumbs. And the next rocks that we have to do have some very interesting looking geology. If you look at this section here, there is a lot of sparkles. And all those sparkles are part of an iron pyrite complex. Gold tends to hang out with the iron pyrite, and I found some of my biggest pieces detecting in rocks that look like this. Let's find out if this has got any nuggets. I can't see any pieces of gold just yet, but look at the structure of the quartz after going through the fire. It looks like really coarse grain sugar cubes. Normally quartz has a really smooth texture to it, and when you look at it once it's been broken up, that smoothness continues throughout the rock. So the fire has obviously done a lot of damage to the structure. <laughs> Finally pulled another piece of gold out of the screen. I've clearly flattened that with old Stampy. And this is the last rock I've got to crush down. There is a very clear visible piece of gold sitting on the tip of the rock there. In theory, one of these should have gold on it. That one looks like it's got gold on it. Whoa, whoa, that's really cool. Because I burnt the quartz, there's a lot more contrast than there normally would be. How cool does that look? I might... I feel like I should keep that piece as is. It just looks pretty. Fairly certain I squished about half a dozen nuggets now. That was the easiest session I have ever had breaking quartz apart with a dolly pot. Not only did it break apart super easy, it reduced to powder, which means that we should have unlocked all the really fine gold that's usually locked up in these specimens. This stage is what I call blowing the silt out. Often when you create really fine powder like this it's hydrophobic so you've got to make sure that everything gets very wet so that the gold can sink and not repel water but that very fine silt also forms like a clay and that clay makes it very very difficult to pan off if you run a fair amount of water through it you'll end up getting rid of most of that silt here we go we have our concentrates all busted up a nice big beautiful tub of water and hopefully a whole bunch of fine golds This is the most exciting and nerve-wracking bit because you just don't know how much gold is really locked up in those specimens until you crush them. Starting to see that steel left over from the potato pan that I burnt it in. Not including the two little specimens that I've kept aside, this is our grand total for the gold out of the fire. So much steel. <laughs> Little bit of gold, some nice coarse chunky nuggets there. Yeah, all right, I'm pretty happy with that. Look at how fine some of that gold is. That is a really excellent method for releasing that fine gold. Normally I can't crush rocks that fine that easily. So it's good to see that amount of gold released. When I talk about fine gold, clearly these are little nuggets or pickers depending on where you come from. And this is probably an average flake and you might consider this to be fine gold here. But it's actually, it's actually this stuff that's the fine gold. That is with a 10 times zoom. Just to put in perspective, you can't even see them with your naked eye. That there is what can, you can see on camera from far away. And that there is what I called flakes. Pretty easy to release nuggets from quartz. 
it's something else entirely to release gold that small from the same rock. A little bit of housekeeping. I'm going to be putting a lot more effort into my secondary channel that you may not have heard of called Spud Engineering. I've linked that down below if you're interested in checking it out. It's going to have a lot more vlog style and idea sharing content on it than what you see on Virgus Prospecting as well as some bonus prospecting content. And as for our gold, what an amazing method to get quartz to break down. On this scale, with only a handful of ore, probably not worth putting in all that effort to extract just a little bit of gold. But going into the future, when I've got to crush entire buckets or multiple buckets of ore, this would definitely be a method worth using to help me liberate that fine gold a lot easier. And it was super nice to see that we did manage to pull out a few nice nuggety pieces and not just the flower gold. There's not a huge amount of gold there, but I would like to see a half gram. Leave your guess in the comments below. I do not guess that accurately very often. Point. Five, two, which is worth $42.79 Australian at the time of recording. Until next time, please give your dog a big scratch behind the ears for me. Peace, and I'm out.